What's going on, everyone? Welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking our week four fantasy football running back starts and sits for every single matchup. So make sure to tune in. If you enjoy, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. And let us hear it in the comment section. Do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. But with that being said, Let's get right into it. Real quick, before getting into our breakdown, a quick word from our partners at Price Picks, which is our favorite DFS site of choice this NFL and fantasy football season. If you guys aren't familiar with them, do yourself a favor and check them out. In fact, when you sign up right now and use code ADP, you get a 100% deposit match up to $100. And look, we're already doing all this research for our fantasy football matchup. So why not take advantage of it and get some profits as well? Price picks, well, they allow you to basically do exactly that. They have so many different player prop bets, not only in terms of single stat DFS, but also in terms of fantasy score. And you combine can combine them any which way you want. Super simple, super easy to use. All you have to do, choose two more players from the board, and then just pick the over under on their projected fantasy score or on their single stat. Again, pretty much for every single matchup as the week progresses, those uh, options will be updated even more so. And then the great thing is you've got two different options in terms of how you want to bet it, whether it's a flex play. So that way you can miss one of your selections, but still win. Obviously that's the safer choice. Or if you want more bang for your buck, check out the power play where if you get all your picks correct, well, you win even bigger. So again, check all of that out details in the description. And we kick off week four with the Jaguars at the Bengals. And this one is pretty easy on terms of the Bengal side. You're starting Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon has an awesome matchup in this game and I believe has top five upside on the week. He's been getting the usage and now in a very favorable matchup, he should be in for a big time performance. He is a locked and loaded RB1. James Robinson coming off his best week of the year, short year to be fair, but from what we had seen from the Jaguars, there wasn't a lot to be excited about when it came to James Robinson. And now facing the Bengals, look, this one was one I kind of struggled with. I was tempted to put James Robinson in the sit column, but considering some of the tougher matchups this week, some injuries, etc., I think you're going to have to start James Robinson, but I don't love the matchup here. The Bengals run defense has been really, really good this season. And yes, Najee Harris just had an awesome game against them, but that was because he mainly did it through the air. The Jaguars aren't utilizing James Robinson as that pass catching running back like they did last season. And I'm worried that the Bengals are going to be able to stifle him uh, via that run defense. And if the Bengals go up on the Jaguars, which has kind of been the theme so far with any team facing Jacksonville, then Robinson could be game scripted out. So I'm really expecting low end RB2 performance from James Robinson. And again, if you have better options, I would probably sit him and, you know, twofold for Carlos Hyde, who has now emerged as the backup. So uh, I'd be fading him here uh, and even potentially considering James Robinson. Then we go to the Titans at the Jets. You only want to start Derrick Henry here, uh, but at least the start in Derrick Henry is an awesome one because the Jets, similar to the Jaguars, are absolutely god-awful, and Henry should be in for, uh, again, probably a top five running back performance. This is a great matchup. All the Titans really have to do is just hand the ball off to Derrick Henry repeatedly, and he should be uh, just fine. Even without the pass-catching work, I anticipate easily over 100 yards, probably multiple touchdowns. I love Derrick Henry, could be the number one running back in standard formats this week. And then as far as the Jets are concerned, I don't want anything to do with their offense. I've been saying that for a while, whether it's Michael Carter, whether it's Ty Johnson, uh, I think it's a bad game script for them. I think the Titans are going to go up on the Jets who can't do anything right. And then Michael Carter and Ty Johnson won't really have a role in this offense. And you can even include Tevin Coleman in this trio if you really wanted to. To me, it makes zero difference. All of these running backs are just 
non-starters, even if the Jets were, you know, playing an easier opponent. Uh, I think right now there's no clear cut running back, even though Carter's kind of trending towards it. The Jets are just so damn bad that uh, these running backs don't really have an opportunity to shine. So I am sitting all the Jets running backs. Afterwards, Lions at the Bears. This one's a little bit better. DeAndre Swift and Jamal Williams, I'm starting. Swift is an absolute PPR cheat code. You have to love how much Jared Goff is going to to him, and I continue to believe that that will be the case. Jamal Williams, a little bit less so, uh, but he has his opportunities to shine as well. Uh, In PPR formats, I view him as a low-end RB2, high-end RB3, and in my opinion, that'll continue to be the case pretty much all season long. And for the Bears, Montgomery coming off an absolutely awful game versus the Browns. But to be fair, so is the entire Bears offense. However, this should be a perfect bounce back candidate type of game. The Lions defense is not good, to put it bluntly. And Montgomery should, you know, be a focal point on this team, especially if Justin Fields is is the starter. It doesn't really matter who the starter is. I don't think the Lions defense has the personnel to take advantage of the Chicago offensive line like a team uh, with the Browns was able to this last week. So keep that in mind. I think Montgomery bounces back in a big way and can be a top 12 running back on the week. Then Colts at the Dolphins. I'm starting Jonathan Taylor and Naheem Hines. Uh, Jonathan Taylor is your big upside guy. He's the RB1 on the team, even though, cough, cough, he's been outscored by Naheem Hines so far this season. Uh, But I think it'll come. I think the production will come. To me, Taylor's just too good for it not to. And then Hines is the guy that you kind of start in that PPR slot, kind of that James White role. If you're hurting at the running back position, you could do a lot worse with him as a potential flex play. So low end RB2, high end RB3, similar to Jamal Williams, similar to like a James White if he were healthy. Then for the Dolphins, Miles Gaskin. Look, Gaskin has underwhelmed so far this season, but he's been getting a lot of that pass catching work and he's still the primary, you know, runner for this Dolphins team. We'll see if Tua comes back. Uh, this week for if he does I think it helps the entire offense I think it helps Miles Gaskin but I still have Miles Gaskin in the low end RB2 category and then I'm sitting Malcolm Brown don't go chasing the touchdowns don't go chasing you know that one kind of all right week he had in week three I think that's a one-off way too touchdown dependent and he's a clear backup to Miles Gaskin so I am fading him moving on we've got the Browns at the Vikings and this one is simple you start Nick Chubb you start Kareem Hunt every single week that's the case Chubb is your standard a base scoring running back, while Kareem Hunt is a great option in PPR formats. Both these guys can be, you know, top end RB ones any given week. Last week, it just so happened to be Kareem Hunt. You know, moving forward, Chubb obviously has the higher opportunity, the higher percentage to be the top running back for the Browns. But either way, can't go wrong with any of these options for the Vikings. Dalvin Cook should probably have an asterisk next to his name because he obviously missed week three but if he's back you start him doesn't matter who the opponent is Dalvin Cook is that good you start him every single week then I will say if Cook misses fire up Alexander Madison yet again because you could do a lot worse Madison was utilized well in week three had a good performance and if Cook misses the game I don't think Madison will have the same type of upside like he did in week three or the same type of upside that Cook would have in this matchup. But regardless, he would still be a high end RB2. So I would start him there. If Cook plays, uh, obviously Madison is a sit. Then we've got Washington at Atlanta. You start Antonio Gibson in an awesome matchup here versus the Atlanta Falcons. Even though Washington is kind of up in the air with their usage of Gibson, He is by far the top running back for this team. So I really like this matchup for him to have a big type of game here. For the Falcons, Mike Davis and Cordero Patterson. Let's be honest, Mike Davis is not playing up to what you drafted him. He's a low-end RB2 probably at best, and that's primarily because he's getting some pass catching work. Uh, Cordero Patterson, I'm going to continue to list him as a start because of the flexibility that he has. You can play him at running back, at wide receiver, with Russell Gage a bit banged up, with Kyle Pitts underwhelming. Patterson is getting a lot of usage as a pass catcher as well. I mean, he was a wide receiver previously, and that's kind of a cheat code at the running back position. So I I like both these guys. To me, Patterson has the higher upside, especially in PPR formats. 
Uh, and I think he is in that low end RB2 category, similar to a Mike Davis. And then I'm sitting JD McKissick. I, you know, I know he's that pass catching running back, but I don't think the game script will favor him here. I think Washington pulls away from the Falcons. I think the defense clamps down. And to me, this is going to be one on the ground via their, you know, kind of bruising running back, which is Gibson more so than McKissick for sure. And for that reason, I would be sitting McKissick here. Afterwards, Texans at the Bills. I'll start Singletary and Zach Moss primarily because it's the Houston Texans here. If it was versus another opponent, uh, I would be only starting one of these guys. Now, Zach Moss is kind of a name that's trending up because he's had two pretty decent back-to-back weeks and more involved as a pass catcher, you know, finding the end zone more frequently than Singletary. So, you know, this week, he's probably going to be the guy that more people take a chance on in this backfield. But I'll say it again, I think versus this Houston Texans defense, both these guys can put up low end RB2 numbers kind of as a baseline. So I wouldn't mind starting both of them here. That won't be the case every single week moving forward. For the Texans, I'm sitting absolutely everybody because, you know, the Texans without Tyrod Taylor, I think are a worse off team, worse off offense. We saw how much they struggled versus the Panthers last week on Thursday night. And I think the Bills are a much higher octane offense, which means that the Texans can find themselves down pretty quickly in this game. And if that's the case, they're going to have to abandon the run even more so than we've seen in weeks prior. For that reason, every single one of these running backs is a sit for me. Moving on, we've got the Giants at the Saints. This one is simple. You start every single running back. Barkley coming off his best performance of the year versus the Falcons, like we predicted. Now it kind of gets a little bit tougher again versus the Saints, so I would temper those expectations. While Alvin Kamara coming off his best game of the year versus the Patriots. I think he has a higher upside than Saquon Barkley here. Um, He continues to be the top offensive weapon for the Saints. I'm going to continue to fire him up. uh, But either way, you know, to me, both these guys are must starts pretty much every single week, especially if the usage for Barkley continues to trend upwards. Uh, Now, again, I will say temper your expectations versus the Saints. If you're looking for the same type of performance that you saw versus the Falcons with Barkley, but I think he is still, you know, worst case scenario, a low end RB2, even with a bad opponent even with bad game script Barkley will get his opportunities it'll only get better as the year progresses afterwards Chiefs at the Eagles I'll start Clyde Edwards Alaire finally had that good performance that we were waiting for versus the LA Chargers and I think that you know the Chiefs will continue to get him more and more involved to me he's still in the RB2 category high-end RB2 however for the Eagles Miles Sanders coming off a bad performance versus the Dallas Cowboys, but the game script didn't really favor him. So maybe he gets a little bit of a pass. Uh, And I will say the Chiefs have kind of been friendly towards some of these opposing running backs. So with that being the case, I think Miles Sanders could be a little bit more involved this week. But to me, he's a low end RB2 on the week because we continue to see it. Jalen Hurts kind of takes away opportunities from Miles Sanders, which was my worry to kick off the season. And then I'm sitting Kenneth Gainwell. I just don't think there's enough usage to go around here. And for that reason, uh, he's going to be a guy that I don't have faith in. Then Panthers at the Cowboys. Chubba Hubbard is a guy that is going to take over, at least on the short term, for Christian McCaffrey, who obviously got injured versus the Houston Texans. Good news is that injury doesn't look to be as bad as initially thought, so maybe it's going to be only a week's absence or two weeks, something like that. But in the meantime, Hubbard, you fire him up, obviously doesn't have the same upside as McCaffrey. I'd say doesn't even have the same upside as Mike Davis last year when he replaced Christian McCaffrey because, you know, Hubbard's still young, still a rookie, and I I don't think he is quite as polished as a Mike Davis was last year. Royce Freeman was brought in for a reason. He also got some usage versus the Texans, but to me, Hubbard is the guy that will get the majority of the carries. And that's what matters here. I have him as a mid-level RB2 on the week. Then for the Cowboys, Ezekiel Elliott kind of finally had that big breakout game that we were waiting for this last week versus the Eagles. I'm firing him up as a low-end RB1. And then Tony Pollard, you know, if 
you need some help. Pollard has been getting between like 60 to 70, 80 yards every single week. And that's pretty useful, especially if it's in standard scoring formats. So again, uh, you know, you could do a lot worse than Pollard. And for that reason, I'd fire him up as probably a high-end RB3 here. But I'm sitting Royce Freeman. I'd say don't go chasing the points or don't go chasing the upside or the, you know, potential opportunity with Freeman. Yes, McCaffrey's absence opens up a lot of options for the Panthers, but I continue to say it, Hubbard will get the majority of the carries, whether he is the better running back or not. Uh, right now, he just has the faith of you know this coaching staff, and for that reason, he's the guy that you want to start, not Royce Freeman. Then Seahawks at the 49ers. You start Chris Carson every single week. That is a given. To me, he has low-end RB1 upside. For the 49ers, Elijah Mitchell, if he plays, is a good start. Sermon, you know, this last week versus the Packers, he only had his day salvaged because of a late touchdown. If it wasn't for that, it would have been much, much more disappointing. And the Seahawks defense has been giving up a lot of points. So... You know, I, I do like the opportunity here for whoever the running back is, but I think the upside is higher for Mitchell. Kind of concerning to see how Sermon was utilized, how, you know, the 49ers were giving more opportunities to Kyle Juszczyk, their fullback, than Sermon at one point in time. So keep an eye out for that. I think Mitchell has high-end RB2 potential versus the Seahawks. If he doesn't go, then Sermon probably low-end RB2 uh, with him being the starter in that case. Moving on, we've got the Cardinals at the Rams. Here, I'm starting Chase Edmonds and sitting James Conner. Yes, I realize Conner was just, you know, balling out this last week versus the Jaguars, but that was such a favorable matchup. We kind of predicted that that could be the case. Now versus the Rams, one of the best defenses in the NFL, I really don't think you should be chasing the points because that same production will not be there. Instead, I think the Cardinals are going to much more so focus on utilizing the pass catching aspects of their running backs. Enter Chase Edmonds. He does that really well. I think he will be a mid-level RB2 on the week. For the Rams, it's simple. Uh, I'm only starting Daryl Henderson here. Uh, if he doesn't play, I don't want to take a chance on Sony Michelle or any one of these other running backs to me. Henderson is the uh, best kind of well-rounded running back on this roster. Just don't have enough faith in Sony Michelle on his own. I don't think he brings enough to the table as a pass catching running back. Uh, coaches are optimistic that Henderson will play. So look, James Robinson just had his best game of the year versus this Cardinals defense. I think Henderson would be in a similar type of conversation if he plays here for the Rams. So I'm starting him there. But in the meantime, just keep an eye out for his health as we get closer to week four. Afterwards, Packers at the Steelers. You start all running backs here. Aaron Jones and Najee Harris. Najee Harris has been salvaging his performances via the passing attack, which is nice to see, especially in PPR formats. But, you know, I, again be remiss not to say that I didn't warn people about the offensive line for the Steelers and that the rushing upside isn't there for Harris. But as long as he continues to get double digit targets every single week, it won't really matter. So that's the nice thing there. I think he's a high end RB2 on the week. For Aaron Jones, yes, it's a tough Pittsburgh Steelers defense, but the Packers are starting to click and Jones is getting a lot of opportunities. So you continue to start him. He's a low end RB1 in my opinion. Then we've got the Ravens at the Broncos here. I was really tempted to list everyone as a sit, but uh, I'll put Melvin Gordon in the start column. But even doing so, uh, I don't think that he has too many weeks left being the unquestioned uh, top running back for the Broncos because Javante Williams looks good. And as is the case with the majority of rookie running backs, they start off slow and then towards the end of the season, they kind of take over. Uh, and I think that'll probably be the case here with the Broncos. But the year is still early and Gordon is still getting the bulk of the carries. I'll say 60-40 type of split. And for that reason, I would start him here. But this is a tougher matchup than what the Broncos faced versus the Jets. So keep that in mind. I think Gordon is a low-end RB2. I'm not saying that Javante Williams can't have success. But I think that he's going to be very touchdown dependent. And for that reason, he's probably in the RB3 category. If you start him, I understand why, but I think he's just going to be too touchdown dependent, so I would pass on him. Then for the Ravens, I'm sitting everyone. I'm sitting Tyson Williams. I'm sitting Latavius Murray. 
Yes, I realize they probably had a one-off versus the Detroit Lions, but neither one of these guys is getting enough usage to be a reliable running back. And in the meantime, they're facing one of the better defenses in the NFL with the Denver Broncos. So for that reason, I really don't want to gamble on Williams or in Latavius Murray here. Afterwards, Bucks at the Patriots. Well, uh, here's a matchup where I am sitting absolutely everybody. No thanks to Leonard Fournette. No thanks to Ronald Jones. No thank you to Giovanni Bernard, even though he had a big week uh, versus the Rams. He's a bit banged up right now, so he's not even certain whether he will be playing. Uh, but in the meantime, look, the Bucks continue to not commit 100% to either Ronald Jones or Leonard Fournette, even though Fournette uh, has a lot more opportunities. Still, the Patriots defense is stingy enough where uh, I don't think that Fournette or Ronald Jones would have big outings here. To me, this is the Tom Brady revenge game. To me, Tom Brady is going to have a big time you know, performance through the air. So I'm not really looking at the running backs here for the Patriots. Uh, while James White got banged up, he's probably going to be out for a while. So that kind of leaves only Damian Harris as the main reliable option here. And versus this Buccaneers defense, that's pretty much stopped everybody they've played at the running back position. No thank you to Damian Harris. So I really hate this matchup as far as running backs are concerned. And then finally, we've got the Raiders at the Chargers. And for the Raiders, I'll start Kenyon Drake. I think he's that kind of low-end PPR type of option for the Raiders. You know, low-end RB2, high-end RB3 in PPR scoring. If he plays, I'll start Josh Jacobs. If he doesn't, go with Peyton Barber again because uh, we continue to see that Drake won't get the majority of the carries, that it's either going to be Barber or Jacobs. Uh, I think either one can be a mid-level RB2 on the week versus the Chargers, who just allowed Clyde edwards Alaire to have a pretty decent outing. And then for the Chargers, it's pretty simple. You start Austin Eckler every single week. I've been saying this since the start of the season. Eckler is an awesome PPR option, and I think he will be just that yet again here in week four. So fire him up as an RB1 on the week. So with that, we wrap up our week four fantasy football running back starts and sits for every single matchup. And let us hear in the comments section, as usual, do you agree, disagree, along with any other questions you guys might have? We will do our best to answer them all. If you enjoyed, hit that like button, subscribe, give us a follow on Twitter at All Day Pigskin to continue interacting with us there. But in the meantime, we'll see you guys in future videos.